Hey guys, what's up? It's Monday, and it's time for another edition of The Breakfast Club. So, to wax philosophical again and to touch on the serious topic again, as I'm sure you've noticed with, you know, the political atmosphere in this country and, you know, <laughs> the type of videos that we've been putting here on this particular YouTube channel, the political scene here in the United States is quite, well, tense. And depending on your ideology, you know, you will have very strong views on one particular matter or another. Things are very, very divided. But no matter what your particular position is, you're bound to think that there needs to be some sort of change in the social order. Depending on your ideology and your point of view, that's the severity of the change varies, but there tends to be some feeling for change. And depending on your ideology, you may even be thinking that there needs to be some type of, for lack of a better word, some type of revolution. The word resistance tends to be bandied around a lot. Uh, change is another one. Um, though it's ridiculed depending on who you are and who you're talking about. Uh, you know, upheaval, social justice, whatever. If people tend to be thinking that there has to be some type of challenge to either the powers that be or the status quo of, you know, a particular aspect of our lives and a particular aspect of our culture. And while I happen to have my own particular viewpoints and my own particular beliefs on what needs to be changed, one thing that I try to keep a level head about is who are the ones asking for these changes and who are the ones who want to be at the head of such changes and at the head of certain movements. Because if there's one thing I've noticed throughout history when it comes to people asking for some type of change is that the people who tend to be pushing for leadership, the ones who try to take command, are usually not the ones you want in charge of things. And many times, not all the time, but many times the ones who tend to be screaming the loudest and the ones who seem to be making the boldest moves tend to be the ones who are doing the most damage and who tend to do the most to disparage the movement that they happen to be a part of. They're the ones who tend to give certain movements a bad name. They're the ones who can completely transform what might be a peaceful and more benevolent movement or ideology into something nightmarish. There's plenty of examples of this. You see this a lot in straight-up revolutions. And we could take the French Revolution, for instance, which is on my mind a lot lately, not just because I've been messing around with Assassin's Creed Unity again, which it's turned out to be a better game than I thought it was, and you know, it's got its problems. But also because I, you know, see certain parallels to that and the way I know certain people acting. If you look at it on the surface, you know, depending on your point of view, but you know, when you look at it on the surface, it looks, you know, like, you know, the common people getting sick and tired of a corrupt nobility and, you know, finally doing something about it, taking control of their own country forcing it to become more of a democracy. But, you know, another way of looking at it, and the way a lot of conservative people tend to look at it, is that it was a nightmarish time when chaos reigned and the law of order, you know, and justice in the land just got completely overrun by mob rule and savagery. And I find the truth to be a little bit more in the middle. Namely that while the ideology, you know, the you know, the good, there were good intentions there. You know, there really was need for some type of change for the common folk. There was corruption going on. Nobility was screwing them over. However, the good intentions that had begun, the, you know, the idealism of the people who wanted a better way was overtaken by those who simply saw a chance to seize power. And that's part of the reason why chaos ended up taking over. Another reason was simply because Passions ended up overruling, you know, rationality. You know, emotions tend to do that a lot. You know, when people feel that they need to right or wrong, when people feel that enough injustice has happened to them, and when they happen to be part of a mob that happens to feel that way, anything can happen, and usually it's nothing good. <laughs> and what makes it worse is when you have those in charge of such a thing fanning 
those the passions of those people to get them to react violently the way they want because it suits their needs especially when they you know want certain people eliminated or they want you know a certain fierce order of fear established this happens all the time whenever there's you know any type of but i can think of there's always these like you know unscrupulous individuals who see that this is a great chance for them to seize power where you know the current system that they may be in whether it be corrupt or not they may not be able to seize power that easily but with this newer system they suddenly ah now i can be in charge and they may not have the best of intentions for people involved they just have the best of intentions for themselves and i you know i see this in many different historical events and in many different movements and i'm even seeing this happening now there are a lot of issues and topics and, and things these days that are rightly being you know discussed and examined and there are a lot of problems going on that do need you know to be solved a lot of issues that need to be faced head on and for us to have honest discussions about them and there are things that do need change there are things you know that need to be rectified but you got to be careful on who's taking control of such movements and what they're claiming to do to solve these problems does it look like they're actually trying to come up with a solution that will actually solve the problem and benefit you know the people as a whole or is what they're asking for something that's just going to end up leading to more division and chaos in the long run? And that's not an easy question to answer because depending on your own points of view or ideologies or prejudices, you may think that something well-meaning may actually be destructive and vice versa. So it's a very easy trap to fall into, especially if the person who happens to be doing things just for their own sake, you know, who are doing things, you know, in a very dishonest way, you may still want to be on their side because the issue that they're taking up is an issue that you happen to believe in. The ideology that they claim to follow might be one that you truly have, you know, an interest in, that you truly value. And so when you see them making bold speeches or you see them making bold moves that seem to be toward that ideology, it's very hard to then have to, to criticize them. I see this a lot. People don't want to criticize someone who's claiming to be on their side and who may seem to be very effective. But I must stress that you have to be careful on who are the ones who are championing your cause and who are the ones who are screaming the loudest, because sometimes they may not necessarily be the ones who have your best interests at heart. And you may find that they actually care very little about your ideology. What they really care about is seizing power. And again, you see this throughout history over and over and over again and i personally believe the same things are happening right now with current movements whether it's left right progressive conservative no matter what charlatans are everywhere and you have to be careful not to let them in so yeah that's what i wanted to discuss it's something that's been on my mind of late <laughs> among other things but uh, you know, but gave you something to think about. And I hope it sparked some discussion. Hope you got some value from it. And I'll catch you guys later.